Good evening. This is a meeting of the Athens Board of Zoning Appeals. The time is 7.01 p.m. and the date is February 13, 2018. At this time, I will call the meeting to order. Uh, the board consists of five members and two alternates. The alternates taking full part in the discussions and becoming a voting member in the absence of a member or when a member abstains for the conflict of interest. Uh, present tonight are members, Mr. Ed Baum, Ms. Lisa Carson, um, Ms. Kate Housley, and alternates are Mr. Aaron Thomas, who will be a voting member tonight in the absence of Mr. John Gutekinds. And I would like to welcome our newest member, Ms. Jessica Kopowitz. Welcome. And she will be our alternate member tonight. I am John Golzi, the chair. Uh, also present are the Zoning Administrator, Mr. Rick Soroyce, and Secretary, Mr. Paul Eschenbacher. At this time, I invite you to view a pre-recorded video on the rules and procedures of the board. The Athens Board of Zoning Appeals operates according to the following procedure. The chair will name and describe the case. The zoning administrator or secretary will state the basis of the objection and any applicable facts or conditions pertaining to the case. The appellant or their representative will give reason why the appeal should be viewed favorably. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the request will be heard. Anyone wishing to speak in general comment will be heard. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition will be heard. If necessary, the appellant or their representative will offer concluding summary or rebuttal remarks. Testimony from the floor shall be closed. The board will deliberate and render a decision. According to Athens City Code section 23.07.03b, the board has power to grant variances from the strict application of the code provided the variance will not be contrary to the public interest, the spirit of the code is observed, public safety and welfare are secured, and substantial justice is done. According to Athens City Code, section 23.07.10c, variances from the code shall not be granted unless the board makes specific findings of fact based directly on the particular evidence presented to it that the standards and conditions imposed in this title, if applicable, have been met by the applicant. Exceptional circumstances. There are exceptional or extraordinary circumstances or conditions applying to the property in question or to the intended use of the property that do not apply generally to other properties or classes or uses in the same zone. Practical difficulty and undue hardship. Because of exceptional or extraordinary circumstances or conditions pertaining to a specific piece of property, a literal enforcement of these regulations will result in practical difficulty or undue hardship that is unnecessary to the achievement of public purposes. Preservation of equal property rights. Literal interpretation of these regulations would deprive the appellant of rights commonly enjoyed by others in the same zone and the same vicinity, while a granting of the requested variance will not confer on the applicant any special privilege that is denied to other properties in the same zone and the same vicinity. Minimum variance. The variance granted is the minimum variance required to make possible the reasonable use of the property. Absence of detriment. The authorizing of such variance will not be of substantial detriment to adjacent property and will not materially impair the purpose of the zoning code or the public interest. Not of a general nature. The condition or situation of the specific piece of property or the intended use of said property for which variance is sought one or the other, or in combination, is not of so general or recurrent a nature as to make reasonably practicable the formulation of a general regulation for such condition or situation. 
any person resident or officer department or appointed body of the city of athens aggrieved by a decision of the board may petition the athens county court of common pleas concerning the illegality of the decision such petition must be filed within thirty days after the mailing of the decision of the board to the applicant thank you uh, three cases on the agenda tonight. Uh, case number 1805S for substitute will be heard first, uh, followed by case 1806V, uh, the property at 406 Elmwood uh, Place, and the first property was 46 at 46 and a half at Smith Street. And the last case would be 1807V, the property at 859 East State Street. The board is required to take testimony under oath. Would anyone wishing to speak concerning any item on the agenda please stand? Do you swear or affirm that any testimony you will present to the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay, thank you. Be seated, please. Okay, case number one is case uh, number 1805S, uh, the property 46 and 46 and a half is Smith Street. Uh, Greg Chapman is the appellant. Appellant is requesting under ACC 230502A a substitution of a non conforming structure, which is a duplex with 10 total tenants allowed, uh, one legal non-conforming parking space, a front setback of three feet where 25 feet is the minimum requirement, a left, set, uh, a left side setback of two feet where 12.5 feet is the minimum requirement, a building lot coverage of 60% where 30% is the maximum allowed, um, total lot coverage of 65% where 60% is the maximum allowance and lot size of 3,367 square feet where 7,000 square feet is the minimum requirement. Uh, substituting all of that for a triplex or uh, triplex with six total tenants of uh, four parking spaces where six is the minimum requirement a front setback of five feet, a left side uh, setback of 3.5 feet, a lot size of 3,367 square feet, where 10,000 square feet is the minimum requirement. Building lot coverage of 33% uh, and total lot coverage of 61%, 61%. So I'm going to summarize all of this. Basically, they are going from a duplex to a triplex. They are going from 10 tenants to six tenants. They are increasing the parking from one to four. The front setback of three feet is going to be increased to five feet. The left side setback from two to three and a half feet. And the building coverage from 60% to 33% and the total lot coverage of 65% to 61%. Of course, uh, the lot size is not changing. However, for a duplex, you need 7,000 square feet. Uh, for a triplex, you need 1,000 uh, square feet. 10,000. So, 10,000, 10, 10, yeah, a square feet. Mr. Royce or Mr. Eschenbacher, anything else we need to know? Um. Just to get ahead of ourselves, after you're done discussing it and all, for the decision-making process, there aren't any findings or anything. You simply discuss and vote. Okay. Okay. No findings. Um, um, I just have a question, just for the general purpose question. Uh, what is the difference between this and a variance? Uh, substitution is substituting one non-conforming use for another. Okay. A variance is normally creating a non-conformity where there wasn't one before. Okay, okay. And I have a question. 
Um, there's a reference in page four or something to the zone being R2 paren transitional R3. Yeah, there's a rule that if you have a lot that's right against another uh, zone, mm -hmm. that that zone can, those rules can apply to that lot. Okay. So that's the boundary of R2 and R3? Yep. Okay. Okay. Would the appellant would uh, come to the podium, please, and uh, state your name and address for the <coughs> records and your case. Uh, Greg Chapman, 10 Tulane Road, here in Athens. Um, it's quite a shopping list of everything that's wrong with that. <laughs> Speak up a little. Okay. Uh, I'll uh, go through uh, a brief history of, of the property. Uh, I, this is a proposal for a standalone property on a platted lot uh, that doesn't meet hardly anything. <laughs> uh, but for me, this is part of a, as a, of a larger project that I started 24 years ago, which was 16 houses that were acquired all at one time, um, uh, houses that were in pretty rough shape, <laughs> including the one we're talking about tonight. Um, they all were occupied at the time of the purchase. Um, uh, and, and people, I don't know, people that aren't familiar with what the neighborhood was, I brought a couple before and after pictures. I've been before the board before. We've done a couple of other projects as a substitution. Um, and I could show you some before and afters I people like to look at. I know this, this neighborhood, 24 years ago, you walked through it, it was, um, it was like walking back in time, <laughs> kind of a, a world unto itself. <laughs> And if you'd like to just pass those down, I, there's two, two addresses that we did. Um, five Foster, the first one was uh, two houses, two rundown houses, a rundown garage, a rundown barn, <laughs> another rundown outbuilding that we demolished. And we did the substitution uh, to put a nice duplex in there in its place. Uh, Seven Foster, again, a terribly run down house that didn't really warrant fixing it up. And we did the substitution there and created a, a, a very attractive three bedroom house, I believe. Um, so for me, th this, this project is, is still <laughs> is a project in work still at 24 years. Uh, this house had been occupied when I bought it. I had a long term tenant that was there until just a couple years ago. Um, when we bought these properties, I never had this place, anybody that lived in them. The, the conditions weren't, weren't good. <laughs> two, two of 16 houses actually had central heat. <laughs> they were rough. Uh, but we, we never had to displace anybody, and I'd had a, a, a lady that lived in one of these houses. Well, actually, both were occupied. 46 Smith was occupied for a couple years. Uh, a fellow moved on. We actually started to think about renovating it, and geez, the old, how do you make a silk purse out of a sow's ear? <laughs> and I will just put this one off and work on others. So, and we couldn't work on one without doing them both. The houses uh, were originally two separate houses. Somewhere over time, around 1900, they became one. They connected one to the other. There's no foundation under it, just one house is hanging on <laughs> to the other one. Um, so it was it just a, it's a difficult build, but I think uh, the well, well, I think the plan that we came up with here, uh, once it became vacant, then I could start thinking about what. Well, I've thought for years what I could do when and if the time comes, it becomes available to do it, and I've gone through idea after idea. This last idea, I. Uh, I really like the idea of using the, the the feeling there of that little narrow alley, Foster Place, and creating something that looks like an urban row house situation, trying to make a, as nice a situation out of it as we can. Uh, I know, well, as, as stated there, we are decreasing the building footprint considerably, increasing setbacks, uh, not to mention offering quality, comfortable, efficient housing. And I think it would just, it's something that will just really fit 
particularly with the HDL across the street, that kind of a uh, manufacturing or, or commercial kind of look, I, th I think it would fit in as better than anything I can think of. Uh, I presented the plan that you have. I did talk to the code inspector that reviewed the plan, and we went over it. Uh, of course, I got my denial to build, which of course was expected. Uh, and if I mentioned to him later after submitting it that I had another thought on it, and that would be entertaining the idea of three parking spaces as opposed to four. And he said, well, it'd probably be best just to bring that up at the meeting. Um, I think it offers some advantages. Uh, and, and I drew up, well, it's just eliminating one of the four spaces. So it's still providing a space per unit. I have one bedroom units. I have three now. Um, I, I, well, I know the permit says occupancy of six. It would be, I would want an occupancy permit of six. but. In 35 years of my one bedrooms that I have, I can think of, I can't count them, but maybe four times in 35 years where people have shared the apartment, the occupancy is one. Uh, in the last 10 years, I had one. And uh, even then, we did not have any parking. I have parking available. Well, that's another issue to come to. But um, what that would do, it would also bring the space requirement into conformity. It would give a little more yard. The total coverage, it's on the board there, the, the total coverage should bring, uh, bring that into conformity to have a little extra yard. I do have the other properties where I have more parking than I do have tenants. Uh, five more spaces than I have tenants, but we never have every tenant with a car. So I have extra spaces available should it become an issue. I, I really, I think it would be a rarity. Plus we have Union Street parking right next door. Uh, I think the extra, the extra lot area would be nice. And I don't think I'm missing anything. I think I'm still being able to offer a parking space to go with each unit. Uh, this additional parking that you have, uh, how far are they from the existing building? Uh, just a. A uh, couple hundred feet. Okay. Just, just, it, I don't know if you, the lots are all, all my properties there, they're all okay. contiguous and continuous, and, and it's just right next door. Okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if the board would see to uh, like and approve the idea, I'd like, if possible, maybe discuss the, the parking issue. Um, again, I just I blotted out from what I believe you do have. One of the parking spaces, and so it, uh, we're not looking like that. Well, you're actually increasing from one to either three or four. That would be an improvement. That would be an increase. Oh yeah, one. Yeah, yeah right now it's yeah, yeah. it's virtually none. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah. any questions from the board to the appellant? Mm -hmm. I have a question uh, while you're thinking. Uh, when you say you are going to uh, reduce the footprint, so are you tearing down part of a building or? Uh, the, how, the tearing down the two houses that are there. Okay. Clear, clearing the lot totally. Oh, you're totally demolishing the Everything, lot. right. The the new structure would be pretty much in the area where the single story part with the metal roof is now, right on Smith Street. And the story and a half building is where the parking would be. Okay, see that was the question that I originally had was, if it's gonna be a total demolishment, then would it still the, the substitute work? Yes. I mean, what we are basically saying, they're starting a brand new building uh, with all these non-conformities. Mm -hmm. And that it would be a substitution for the non-conforming building, the buildings that are presently there. 
and everything that I'm doing is, is further into conformity. Okay. I can't meet conformity yeah. on this a 37 lot, foot wide lot. This lot been no. out of conformity for how long? For Well, since the zoning laws were put in place. Okay, you may be seated for now, and then we'll find out if there's anyone wishing to speak in favor of the request. Can be heard now. Anyone wishing to speak in general or in opposition can be heard now. Okay, we're going to close the discussion from the floor. Any discussion on board? Nope. Uh, Mr. Baum, I know you would love to read this thing. I'm not going to read the whole. What I'm going to do is say. <laughs> That's what I ask you. <laughs> um, I move that the Board of Zoning Appeals grant the request under Section ACC 230502A as a substitution for one conforming structure to another conforming structure as indicated in the agenda. Okay. And may be clarified because I had to do it also. It's from a 10 person structure to a six person structure. Second? Second, with non-conforming, not conforming. No, Yeah, you said conforming. Oh, I meant non-conforming. Non yeah. Also, he's going from, he's going to do from four to three. You want spaces. me to just put the whole thing put in? Put the whole thing in. Okay. And he's going from four spaces to three spaces, correct? Or you can change the parking spaces? Uh, I was leaving that. That's what he's, to discuss. that's not in my motion yet. If someone okay. wants to amend the motion to allow three rather than for he or she is. Uh, could you go able back to over there for a second? Um, you could provide, you said you could provide four parking space, but going to three, you said there were some benefits. What are those benefits? Extra open area. But it, it, what it does is, um, let me find it here. Because we always like to have more parking. So, total, yeah, leave okay. the space there. Total lot coverage. <coughs> With the four spaces is is uh, as, per, as proposed with four spaces is 65 percent, where 60 is the minimum, okay. or is the maximum allowance. Taking one of those spaces out reduces my coverage, the lot coverage. Okay. Well, I think the board's preference usually would be more space for the parking would be better than having less lot coverage, but it's up to you. Well, no, it's up to you. I just feel that I can provide the parking if I need it. Okay. I don't, I, you know, I'll We'd have rather have four, right? Well, the motion presently is four. If someone on right, the board yeah. wants to amend okay. that okay. to change it to three, no, he or she four. is okay. capable of doing so. Yeah. Four be fine. Okay, four it is. Um, do we have a second? K, okay, okay, yeah. okay, second. And then, uh, do we have any other? I think that this uh, nonconformity is less objectionable than what it is. In almost every case, there is an improvement. Yeah. So that's my discussion. We don't have to go through the findings. Are anybody else has any other? Well, I would just say I agree that whenever you're improving a situation, it is the betterment of the city of Athens. Uh, with a lot size of 3,700 square feet, there's absolutely no way you would ever meet any city code uh, because of that. And there's no way we can redo the plat of the city of Athens and the whole central part. So I think this is a, an improvement and worthy of our support. So in that case, uh, let's vote. All in favor of this uh, substitution, raise your hand. Uh, we got five to zero. Case number two. This is a lot shorter. Uh, case number 1806B. <coughs> the property is at 406 Elmwood Place. The zone is R1, and Mr. Nick Cohn is the appellant. The appellant is requesting a variance from ACC 230314 to allow a fence with a zero uh, feet. Um, front setback where 25 feet is the minimum requirement. Are we good on that? Okay. Um, I know the next door neighbor, they had the sidewalk, and the sidewalk stops at his property. So, any 
chance of ever the city wants to put a sidewalk in there? I don't even know if it's part of the comprehensive plan. plan no. Okay. Would the appellant please come to the podium and uh, state your name and your address for the record? Hi, my name is Nick Kuhn. Uh, address is 406 Elmwood Place, which is where I'm applying for the variance. Would you like to say anything? Sure. Um, so I'm a 10-year uh, resident, um, brand new homeowner. I've been renting for about nine, ten years now. Um, just moved in last month, actually. Um, love the property. Love being a permanent resident of Athens. Um, what I'm the reason why I'm requesting the variance uh, is because if you, so my property is is on the corner of Elmwood and Home Street, um, and the home itself is actually towards the the back corner of the property. So my I don't have a a back yard. All of my yard is in full view adjacent to the street. It also runs parallel. The property runs parallel uh, to the road um, and not really perpendicular like a lot of lots. So as you said, um, the neighbors have a sidewalk that runs right up to where uh, my yard begins. It ends there. Mm -hmm. And then I have yard where that sidewalk would be with a line of trees. It's very nice. It's really mm -hmm. pretty. Um, what I'm looking to do is I would like to place a three and a half foot tall white picket fence. I'm not looking for a privacy fence to keep people from looking into my yard or anything. Like your I, neighbor? Right. I'm actually just looking to, I, I have small pets. Um, I have friends with small children. I'd like to keep them out of the road. Mm -hmm. I know we haven't had a nice sunny day in a while, but when we do have one, it would be nice to be able to go outside and enjoy the yard. Um, I don't want to to get the, the yard that's um, adjacent to Home Street. And the uh, where the fence would end, which is where it meets where my small driveway would be, is, is 20 feet away from that intersection. So I don't foresee it causing an obstruction of field of view coming to and from that road. Um, and as you said, there's there are several other properties that have seem to have fences that you know are beyond uh, where that right away would be, so I'm. I would like to enjoy the same rights if possible. Um, I don't have any other to add besides what I've already submitted. If there's any questions for okay. me, I'd be willing to. I was looking at it today, and I thought if you just come in line with the same as your neighbor, uh -huh. put the fence just behind the trees, mm -hmm. that might actually look nicer. I, I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Okay. To be honest. So. Uh, what you plan? Uh, what was your plan to put right by the curb? Uh, yeah, that was the original plan. But again, yeah. with the trees and everything, it's you still if, have if plenty of room. Yeah, back there, it's not yeah. really gonna. If I put it behind, it's not losing out. It on may all just things. look nicer. I don't know. I, I would probably agree with okay. you. I, I just think the issue for me is with if I go in line and stay within code, it's going to just cut my yard in half. And no, 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 no. I'm just talking right by the trees. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. You may have mentioned this, but you are aware you'll also have to go to city council to get a yes. variance to put it in the right of way. Yes. Yep. I'm willing to. Any other questions from the board members? Jessica, you can ask questions too. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any on this one. It was actually well. <laughs> okay. I read the whole thing. It's very well oh, written. So. Thank you. For what I know about the case. Okay. Uh, <laughs> have we heard anything from any of the neighbors? Or the well, I'm just going to go right now okay. to that. Um, you may be seated. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request? Anyone wishing to speak in general comment or in opposition to this request? Seems that there is no objection. Uh, I don't have any letters for our neighbors in the files, so we're good to go. Um, anyone wants to make a motion? Okay. I move that the board grant a variance in case 1806V, 406 Elmwood Place, zone R1, from ACC 2303 to allow a fence with a zero-foot front setback where 25 feet is the minimum requirement. Second. Okay. Um, exceptional circumstances. There are exceptional or extraordinary circumstances or conditions applying to the property in question or to the intended use of the property that do not apply generally to other properties or classes or uses in the same zone. I would say that being the corner lot and the way the building is situated, 
and he doesn't have it really a backyard, so-called backyard. So maybe he needs a little bit more of a uh, safety zone for pets and children. That would be a special. Yeah, yeah it, it, if the house were turned facing east, then that would be his backyard and there'd be no problem. Yeah. Uh, practical difficulty and undue hardship. I'm not going to read all of it, but this kind of uh, supports the first one. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, preservation of equal property rights. Uh, certainly the next door neighbor at least has some, uh, uh, some uh, fencing. And you folks be, you know, yeah, jump in if you need to add more. Is this minimum variance? Yeah, let's yeah. go for it. Yeah. Absence of detriment. No. Uh, not of a general nature. No. Are we ready to vote? Yes. All in favor of the variance, please raise your hand. We got five to zero. Congratulations. Uh, let's go to the last case. Uh, that is case number 18-7V. The property is at 859 East State Street. Zone is M. Uh, Jeremiah Hunter is the appellant. The appellant is requesting a variance from ACC 230313I1I to allow a front wall sign with zero feet uh, edge uh, setback where three feet eight inches is the minimum distance at a side wall sign with, two, uh, with a two feet setback where 20 feet is the minimum distance. Um, anything to add? Basically what they want to do at the uh new restaurant down there uh, where Abrios used to be. It's now a commercial duplex. On right. one side is K Jewelers, the other side is going to be a restaurant. What the sign person wants to do is at that corner, that front corner there, they want to put their sign and their logo right up on that corner as close to it as we can. Our sign ordinance says that the sign has to be 10% of the width of the building away from that corner. Oh. So that's basically what they want to do. They want to move, put that sign, instead of centering it, they want to put it okay. up against that, that corner, uh, both on the front and on the side. OK. So being raised from the wall is not the issue? No. OK, just the corner. Just the okay. corner. OK, that makes sense. I'm not too sure what it is they're putting up. Is the word or dodo what we're talking about, or is it this Q sort of flat You can ask specifics what the sign will yeah. say, but they yeah, it's supposed to say Q-Dobo. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's part of their logo. I think they have okay. something. Yeah. Present. They have a picture here, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. What they want. Yeah, there is a picture somewhere, I saw. Yeah. yeah. Artwork. Any questions for the code office? Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you please come to the podium and state your name, your address? And your case. Help uh, some pictures here too. So. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. This is the sign. This is the, this is the sign they're talking about. Okay. Regular, but this is oh, nice. Structural. Good evening. Uh, my name's Matt Herridge. Yeah. My address is 373 Timberline Parkway in Vienna, West Virginia, and um, I am a franchisee for the Qdoba Mexican Eats brand. Uh, as well as a Burger King franchisee. We've been in uh, Burger yeah, King for a number of years, our family. We actually own the Burger King here in Athens and so we're very familiar with the city. And um, mm -hmm. we're wanting to expand in the city with another brand. We do have a Qdoba restaurant in Marietta, Ohio right now. This will be our second restaurant. And so I think sometimes the best way to describe what we're trying to do is a picture is worth a thousand words. So if I might ask you to look or turn your attention to the handout, the sign that we're discussing here is what we really, in our brand, call it an architectural element. We don't necessarily consider it signage, but it has been defined that way. Uh, if you look at the, the second um, draft here, the middle draft, you'll see a looks like slats. And it has like a cue that is painted on those slats. And so our, this is a design element that's part of the new branding. And it's a really important part of who we are, and especially distinguishing us from other brands. Um, 
And uh, it is, unfortunately, though, on the corner, and thus it's out of variance. Um, so what we're asking for is your consideration of approving this design element that would sit on the corner. Basically, it's these metal slats or aluminum slats with a Q um, kind of embossed or painted on, on the corner itself, half of it being on one side of the building and the other half on the front side of the building. Um, uh, there's a lot of, we've described, I think, at length some of the issues of why we feel it's really important to have this as a part of our image. We, one of the things that with Qdoba, unlike our, our next competitor, I'm not going to mention their name, but uh, we are not as well known. And this design element we really feel will distinguish us. People will see that. They know who we are. We know, they'll know that we are Qdoba Mexican Eats. And so we're asking for a variance uh, just for this particular piece of uh, a design. And if I can answer any questions, or I also have my business partner and the commercial contractor, Grant Horton, with us too, and he would be able to address any specific issues. Is the one in Marietta on the main drag on the main? It is right on Pike okay. Street, That's right there at the corner. Save me some trip to go in there once a month. Oh, good. <laughs> well, we we are very excited to get into town. We really feel like this is a great community for the brand. Um, you know, we've we've been very pleased with our remodel. I think yeah. maybe you've noticed our Burger King. I, I will brag a little bit. We, we put a lot of money and a lot of effort into making very good looking buildings. Okay. And we feel like this is going to be a, a real uh, asset to the city and to that uh, business uh, community there. And you will have fried ice cream, right? Uh, unfortunately, we won't do that. We do have okay. brownies and we do have okay, um, cookies. <laughs> but that's a great idea. Any questions for the appellant? Is it just painted? It's not lit up. It, it, no, there is no illumination. It's just a paint on, on the exterior. That's all it is. So, what's the full size of the front? Like front, if we're driving out East State from one corner to the end of the to the edge of the sign. The edge of the sign. Let me. I can tell you that. I think exactly here. Let me look on the uh, actual plan. Um, Grant, do you have a, a an idea on the? We can give him the exact dimension. Thing about comparable to the building is 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 it it's ten percent, fifteen percent. I'd 20? say I'd say that's a good that's a good guess right there as far as the percentile. It is a it is a very evident piece. I'll be very frank. It's it's um, uh, when you see it's been done in a number of Qdobas that are, have been newly built, and it is a very striking piece. But it is much. It really looks like a design element rather than signage. It's, just has a Q. It doesn't have our branding name or anything like that. Um, the fact, I think, that we're putting that Q on there is really what's brought this into an issue of signage. But, uh, yeah, let me see if I can. It says that the uh, we're at 19 feet at the top of that building there. Or, I'm sorry, 21 feet at the top of the building. And then at 12 feet is looks like right below that. I'm, try, I'm just kind of guessing here. By, oh, that, that's I fine. I'm, I was just trying to see the from corner to corner, but that's fine. Yeah. But one of the things that we really feel is important about this, too, is that uh, we're, we're putting a really nice patio out there as well. And we really feel that there's something about the, the, the whole being greater than the sum of its parts with that element right over our patio. It kind of gives it a little more of a destination piece to itself with its own uh, structure around it and so that's going to you know be centered or, or right on that corner of that patio um, I think really making that an attractive looking building yes sir I do the picture in the packet shows this gyrated post going all the way to the edge of the building correct the one you just gave us only shows it at the very beginning. Mm. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm just, you look at this, the, this one here, I don't know if you can see it from there. Let me take a look. Yeah, there. two different pictures. Oh, right. But it shows yeah. these gyrations, the whole width. Oh, I mean, this uh, yeah. Yes. Those are just examples. That's not what we That's, the, yeah. What, I'm, what, yeah. What we showed them is what they... The one that is, this is not, these are just examples of what some people have done. Okay. This is, this is our real. This is the real. Change. Okay. Just that's that why corner. I was confused. Thank you. Yeah, that's and, absolutely. And that's uh, sir, please come to the podium so we can all hear you. Yes. And state your name and address. 
Uh, my name is Grant Wharton, uh, 373 Timberline Parkway, uh, Vienna, West Virginia. That's the final. Um, the uh, the one question that uh, I heard was that how far from the corner to the back of the Q screen? It's eight and a half feet. Um, and the uh, the pictures that, that Matt handed out are the actual sign package we would like to install. So it's smaller than the one that was originally turned in. The one the one we're looking at is. That one. But this is the new one. Correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. That was a that this was a rendering by the architect. Okay. This is what they're related oh, question. The front view shows the up and down bars going to the corner of the building. The side view shows a separation between the corner of the building and the first up and down. Is that meant to be one solid going around the corner, or are you in fact having two signs? Uh, no, that the Q screen comes together. It's supposed to come together. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't show it on here. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like the one here. Yeah, what happens? To wrap yeah. around. So this is pretty much. It's yeah. the same Q yeah. can be seen for on both sides, right? <coughs> or are they two Yeah, Qs? it is. That is the same. Q so so is here and the Q is here. Part sides. of it's on one corner. Part of it's right. on the other. So, so yeah, it's it's wrap. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. If yeah, I may, hold on one second. second. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay. One of the things I would just point out to you is that I think the issue is uh, with the total amount of signage. And this is makes it if this is considered signage in excess. Mm -hmm. One of the things we've noticed just even in our neighbor, which is the Tim Hortons, is they have a um, it's like a silver band that goes around the entire <laughs> exterior mm -hmm. with advertising basically on you know, what they sell: biscuits or donuts, things like that, and. I, I just I guess I feel like what we're doing is really not that much unlike that. I think if probably if that was to be included in signage, they would be over as well. Um, but that's just part of their design element for their building too. And and this just happens to be the way we distinguish ourselves. Um, there's no problem with the size of the sign. Right. Yep. In Qdova's case, yep. only where they're placed. Okay. They put me so yeah. far off the. Mm -hmm. yes. I already know that because I had to do with my build. Is that right? Yeah, so it had to be so far set back on the building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I got a billboard, so <laughs> it's a big sign. Any That's questions? Uh, you might yeah. be seated Thank for you. now. <laughs> Does anyone wish to speak in favor of the request? To make people come by, yes. In yeah. general comments or in opposition to this request? Okay, we're going to close the discussion from the floor. And unless there is a discussion, uh, somebody should maybe make it. Aaron, you want to? Um, let's see. Vote towards the grant uh, a variance for appellant requesting variance from ACC 23.03.13 II. Is it I1I one. I mm -hmm. to allow a front wall sign with a zero foot edge setback where three feet eight inches is the minimum distance and a side wall sign with a two foot setback where 20 feet two inches is the minimum distance? Do we have a second? Second. Okay, Mr. Baum, second. Um, going quickly through the findings, exceptional circumstances. Yeah. I think the exceptional circumstances, uh, which is not really with respect to the property, but uh, it signifies their business for some reason, since this is a sign. Can we argue of, that way? I think it's part of the branding. It yeah, might be required yeah. for the actual branding yeah, of the business. Because, yeah, this is actually because of the sign we are discussing. So I would say with, with respect to the sign would be an exception because that's the part of their branding. Do you all agree? Yes. OK. Uh, practical difficulty and on you hardship. I would say somebody coming from Marietta may not recognize it without the queue. <laughs> <laughs> it's, an, it's a national brand. So it's, yeah. I mean. Yeah. Uh, preservation of equal property rights. Yeah. Uh, each of those establishments, they have their own signage and branding. Uh, minimum variance. Yeah. 
It is minimum to make a good use of the signage. Absence of detriment. None? No. Yeah. And not of a general nature? No. 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 Okay, all in favor of this variance, please raise your hand. Uh, you have five to zero. Okay, the disposition of minutes from January 9, 2018. Uh, I have read it, and I didn't find anything no. in there. Anybody else? Those of you who were here present, you may vote. Please raise your hand. We need a motion. If you approve? Yes, we need a motion. I move that we approve the minutes from last month. Second. Okay, now. Present. So we got three, at least four. Okay. And uh, Mr. Reschenbacher, do you have any idea how many cases we might have next month? One so far. One so far. Uh, I'd like to suggest that if we're going to have one or two, we invite the um, uh, city law director for a training for the board on ethics. So would that Ob be okay? Obviously, we'll know two weeks beforehand how many cases. Okay, so. okay. Uh, please let us know. We will plan on it and tentatively and see if we can uh, schedule her. And finally, on February, we select a new chair for our board. And uh, we are taking any nominations or self-nominations. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, the applicants may leave. They don't have to sit through this process if they, if they wish to leave. Mr. Chapman. This is yours. I already know what the neighborhood looks like. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> My friend lived over in college, and I look at it now like. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you so much. I don't need that. Okay. Thank you, guys. Have yeah. a good night. Okay, are you? We uh, accept self nomination and uh, any I, I, I move that John Golsey be nominated as chair of the Board of Zoning Appeals. I second that. Again. <laughs> you do it so well. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I guess I have it. Well, it's been an honor to be serving as a chair and I uh, have enjoyed it, so I look forward for another year. Just glad you feel honored. We really do. So, do we have a motion to adjourn? So move. Okay, we're adjourned. Okay, so <laughs>